We continue on with chapter 7. The Totality of the Kingdom Whenever you deny a blessing to a brother, you will feel deprived, because denial is as total as love. It is as impossible to deny part of the sonship as it is to love it in part, nor is it possible to love it totally at times. You cannot be totally committed sometimes. Denial has no power in itself, but you can give it the power of your mind, whose power is without limit. If you use it to deny reality, reality is gone for you. Reality cannot be partly appreciated. That is why denying any part of it means you have lost the awareness of all of it. Yet denial is a defense, and so it is as capable of being used positively as well as negatively. Used negatively, it will be destructive, because it will be used for attack. But in the service of the Holy Spirit, it can help you recognize part of reality, and thus appreciate all of it. Mind is too powerful to be subject to exclusion. You will never be able to exclude yourself from your thoughts. When a brother acts insanely, he is offering you an opportunity to bless him. His need is yours. You need the blessing you can offer him. There is no way for you to have it except by giving it. This is the law of God, and it has no exceptions. What you deny, you lack, not because it is lacking, but because you have denied it in another and are therefore not aware of it in yourself. Every response you make is determined by what you think you are, and what you want to be is what you think you are. What you want to be, then, must determine every response you make. You do not need God's blessing, because that you have forever, but you do need yours. The ego's picture of you is deprived, unloving, and vulnerable. You cannot love this, yet you can very easily escape from this image by leaving it behind. You are not there, and that is not you. Do not see this picture in anyone or you have accepted it as you. All illusions about the sonship are dispelled together as they were made together. Teach no one that he is what you would not want to be. Your brother is the mirror in which you see the image of yourself as long as perception lasts. And perception will last until the sonship knows itself as whole. You made perception and it must last as long as you want it. Illusions are investments. They will last as long as you value them. Values are relative, but they are powerful because they are mental judgments. The only way to dispel illusions is to withdraw all investment from them, and they will have no life for you, because you will have put them out of your mind. While you include them in it, you are giving life to them, except there is nothing there to receive your gift. The gift of life is yours to give, because it was given you. You are unaware of your gift, because you do not give it. You cannot make nothing live, since nothing cannot be enlivened. Therefore, you are not extending the gift you both have and are, and so you do not know your being. All confusion comes from not extending life, because that is not the will of your Creator. You can do nothing apart from Him, and you do do nothing apart from Him. Keep His way to remember yourself, and teach His way lest you forget yourself. Give only honor to the sons of the living God, and count yourself among them gladly. 
Only honor is a fitting gift for those whom God himself created worthy of honor, and whom he honors. Give them the appreciation God accords them always, because they are his beloved sons in whom he is well pleased. You cannot be apart from them, because you are not apart from him. Rest in his love and protect your rest by loving. But love everything he created, of which you are a part, or you cannot learn of his peace and accept his gift for yourself and as yourself. You cannot know your own perfection until you have honored all those who were created like you. One child of God is the only teacher sufficiently worthy to teach another. One teacher is in all minds, and he teaches the same lesson to all. He always teaches you the worth of every son of God, teaching it with infinite patience, born of the infinite love for which he speaks. Every attack is a call for his patience, since his patience can translate attack into blessing. Those who attack do not know they are blessed. They attack because they believe they are deprived. Give therefore of your abundance, and teach your brothers theirs. Do not share their illusions of scarcity, or you will perceive yourself as lacking. Attack could never promote attack unless you perceived it as a means of depriving you of something you want. Yet you cannot lose anything unless you do not value it, and therefore do not want it. This makes you feel deprived of it, and by projecting your own rejection, you then believe that others are taking it from you. You must be fearful if you believe that your brother is attacking you to tear the kingdom of heaven from you. This is the ultimate basis for all the ego's projection. Being the part of your mind that does not believe it is responsible for itself, and being without allegiance to God, the ego is incapable of trust. Projecting its insane belief that you have been treacherous to your Creator, it believes that your brothers, who are as incapable of this as you are, are out to take God from you. Whenever a brother attacks another, that is what he believes. Projection always sees your wishes in others. If you choose to separate yourself from God, that is what you will think others are doing to you. You are the will of God. Do not accept anything else as your will, or you are denying what you are. Deny this and you will attack believing you have been attacked. But see the love of God in you, and you will see it everywhere, because it is everywhere. See his abundance in everyone, and you will know that you are in him, with them. They are part of you, as you are part of God. You are as lonely without understanding this, as God himself is lonely when his sons do not know him. The peace of God is understanding this. There is only one way out of the world's thinking, just as there was only one way into it. Understand totally by understanding totality. Perceive any part of the ego's thought system as wholly insane, wholly delusional, and wholly undesirable, and you have correctly evaluated all of it. This correction enables you to perceive any part of creation as wholly real, wholly perfect, and wholly desirable. Wanting this only, you will have this only, and giving this only, you will be only this. The gifts you offer to the ego are always experienced as sacrifices, but the gifts you offer to the kingdom are gifts to you. They will always be treasured by God because they belong to his beloved sons, 
who belong to him. All power and glory are yours because the kingdom is his. And from the workbook, we begin the review. Introduction. Beginning with today, we will have a series of review periods. Each of them will cover five of the ideas already presented, starting with the first and ending with the fiftieth. There will be a few short comments after each of the ideas which you should consider in your review. In the practice periods, the exercises should be done as follows. Begin the day by reading the five ideas with the comments included. Thereafter, it is not necessary to follow any particular order in considering them, though each one should be practiced at least once. Devote two minutes or more to each practice period, thinking about the idea and the related comments after reading them over. Do this as often as possible during the day. If any one of the five ideas appeals to you more than the others, concentrate on that one. At the end of the day, however, be sure to review all of them once more. It is not necessary to cover the comments that follow each idea, either literally or thoroughly, in the practice periods. Try, rather, to emphasize the central point and think about it as part of your review of the idea to which it relates. After you have read the idea and the related comments, the exercises should be done with your eyes closed and when you are alone in a quiet place, if possible. This is emphasized for practice periods at your stage of learning. It will be necessary, however, that you learn to require no special settings in which to apply what you have learned. You will need your learning most in situations that appear to be upsetting rather than those that already seem to be calm and quiet. The purpose of your learning is to enable you to bring the quiet with you and to heal distress and turmoil. This is not done by avoiding them or seeking a haven of isolation for yourself. You will yet learn that peace is part of you and requires only that you be there to embrace any situation in which you are. And finally you will learn that there is no limit to where you are so that your peace is everywhere as you are. You will note that, for review purposes, some of the ideas are not given in quite their original form. Use them as they are given here. It is not necessary to return to the original statements, nor to apply the ideas as was suggested then. We are now emphasizing the relationships among the first fifty of the ideas we have covered, and the cohesiveness of the thought system to which they are leading you. Lesson 51 The review for today covers the following ideas. Nothing I see means anything. The reason this is so is that I see nothing and nothing has no meaning. It is necessary that I recognize this, that I may learn to see. What I think I see now is taking the place of vision. I must let it go by realizing it has no meaning so that vision may take its place. I have given what I see all the meaning it has for, for me. I have judged everything I look upon, and it is this and only this I see. This is not vision. It is merely an illusion of reality because my judgments have been made quite apart from reality. I am willing to recognize the lack of validity in my judgments because I want to see. My judgments have hurt me and I do not want to see according to them. I do not understand anything I see. How could I understand what I see when I have judged it amiss? 
What I see is the projection of my own errors of thought. I do not understand what I see because it is not understandable. There is no sense in trying to understand it, but there is every reason to let it go and make room for what can be seen and understood and loved. I can exchange what I see now for this merely by being willing to do so. Is not this a better choice than the one I made before? These thoughts do not mean anything. The thoughts of which I am aware do not mean anything because I am trying to think without God. What I call my thoughts are not my real thoughts. My real thoughts are the thoughts I think with God. I am not aware of them because I have made my thoughts to take their place. I am willing to recognize that my thoughts do not mean anything and to let them go. I choose to have them be replaced by what they were intended to replace. My thoughts are meaningless, but all creation lies in the thoughts I think with God. I am never upset for the reason I think. I am never upset for the reason I think, because I am constantly trying to justify my thoughts. I am constantly trying to make them true. I make all things my enemies, so that my anger is justified and my attacks are warranted. I have not realized how much I have misused everything I see by assigning this role to it. I have done this to defend a thought system that has hurt me and that I no longer want. I am willing to let it go. So beautifully today, we open up to the Kingdom of Heaven, to the power of mind, to the totality of divine mind and of the kingdom of heaven. We see that denial cannot be partial. If I deny reality, I am misusing the power of the mind, a power that was, is without limit. The ego is an attempt to deny reality. And by believing in the ego, reality is obscured. And reality cannot be partially appreciated. It, to deny any part of it means you lose the awareness of all of it. So we call upon the Holy Spirit to appreciate the wholeness of reality. To accept that the mind is too powerful to be subject to exclusion. To admit that I will never be able to exclude myself from my thoughts. Every encounter with a brother, either in thought or seemingly in form, is an opportunity to bless. Every misperception is a very deep call to see the Christ, to give the Christ, to extend love without exception, to have every spot of doubt or error cleared away from the mind that believes in them. This mind cannot be true. It cannot be who I am. And it comes to my desire. Every response you make is determined by what you think you are and what you want to be is what you think you are. What you want to be then must determine every response 
that you make. Today we experience the cohesiveness of every word that is coming to us from Jesus. Every lesson that Jesus has given us is woven perfectly together, designed for only one purpose, one reason, complete freedom of mind, complete escape from linear time, complete escape from error of any kind. We allow these thoughts to roll through our mind today, opening us to the love and the light that far transcends this perceptual world. Nothing so blinding as perception of form. The perception of form means that understanding has been obscured. These early lessons clear the debris in the mind that made perception. These lessons together begin clearing away the thoughts of the ego, so that real thoughts, thoughts that I think with God, can come fully into awareness. And so today, I sink inward as I let these beautiful five lessons roll through my mind clearing a glorious pathway in mind to the Kingdom of Heaven, to the Kingdom of Heaven within. We allow these thoughts to roll right now. Nothing I see means anything. I have given what I see all the meaning it has for me. I do not understand anything I see. These thoughts do not mean anything. I am never upset for the reason I think. <laughs> 